until I solve my issues with the lighting, I'm going to have to remain as much as possible talking without my hands. Now, for most people, that could be quite a challenge, and for me it'll be interesting because I like to sometimes enunciate with my head movements or my, my uh, hand movements or parts of my body that seem to coalesce and correlate a lot of times the things that I'm saying. But you know, we've gotten into a time and a place where by night we share the Word of God and we reflect on those things that are maybe requiring a little more thinking, a little more pondering, as it were. Think on these things, Jesus once said, and the word for behold in the Hebrew often meant to consider, to look at, to understand and to comprehend and as well as to take inside of yourself. When you look at it that way, then maybe we should slow down what we're doing. Maybe we should stop rushing, stop hurrying, and stop making haste. Most of the people I meet in the daytime have a schedule and they're very busy about that schedule that they're doing. The question we need to ask ourselves if the very footsteps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord should we be in such a hurry to get ahead of what God may have planned for us? Should we be so busy as to not stop what we're doing and listen for instructions. I've heard it said to me regularly that I'm foolish in stating, teaching, and mentioning to other Christians that they should seek the Lord to trust in Him to not lean on your own understanding, but to, in all your ways, acknowledge Him and let Him direct your path. And whenever there's a question as to whether to turn to the right or the left, to ask God, as it says in James 1.5. And many people find that offensive of me because I'm more than well aware that most Christians want to assume they know what to do. They want to presume that God has given them knowledge and experience with Him so they can go out and do much like Joshua did. On the one hand, when he asked for the battle plans, he was told to march around Jericho each day worshiping and sending out the singers to declare the glory of the Lord. But after marching and taking the city of Jericho, he decided that at Ai he could do it himself. And so, using the knowledge of his previous experience with God, he tried to take the city and was defeated. I find modern Christians in much the same place as Joshua. On the one hand, they have seen the glory of the Lord and they know what to do and how to do it. But often they don't take the time to stop, look, and listen to what the Spirit of God might be saying. You see, it's one thing to be told to go out and do something and think you know what the results are. But it's quite another thing when you're Abraham and you go out and go forth with your son to sacrifice him until the Lord stops you at the last minute. There is no doubt that the knife was going to be piercing his son. There is no question as to Abraham's faith. It was a test. 
I see in modern Christianity today, and Americans especially, famous for doing their own thing, thinking their own thoughts and acting in a way that may find themselves maybe left behind in a time where they should have listened to the Lord. I was told that I was foolish for not planning on protecting my family by purchasing a gun or a weapon. That in some reason of logic, I should, after all, if somebody broke into my house, worry about those things and plan for the eventuality that maybe that could happen to me. But you see, when you do what God tells you to do, He doesn't send you where He hasn't prepared you to be. When you walk in the Spirit, as He is in the Spirit, then you have fellowship one with another, as well as with the Father and the Son. And if the Father knows ahead of time what's going to happen in the future, and the footsteps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord, I think that He would direct your footsteps to avoid the place where you would need to use a gun to protect yourself. That He would tell you what to do where to go and what to say. We want to start meditation video night or video night meditations. There we go. With thinking on these things that we want to behold, consider, and see. Ra'a is the Hebrew word for consider, to see, to look to be whole. And I can't help but want to inspire you by night to turn off your television and your cell phone. Stop texting and iPadding. Put away your modern conveniences, your technological advances that maybe are distracting you from stopping, looking, and listening to your heartbeat. Considering each breath you take. Beholding the glory of the Lord in the stillness and the quiet of the night. In a still, small voice in a very, very quiet place, you should hear God speak. I have, and I do. You should know that your Father will audibly talk to you. You should be able to hear Jesus with your ears and not just your eyes. If you're not, it's not because they aren't speaking but it's because you're not listening. Slow down. Stop what you're doing. Be still and know that He is God. Will you join me by night in the house of the Lord? Will you walk with me by night with the Spirit of God? Will you talk with your Lord, your Maker, who giveth songs in the night that you might not sing, not speak, and not talk, but listen, and listen carefully to what the Spirit of God might say? Have you ever stopped long enough to look at a candle and meditate on the Lord? Have you considered just one scripture for an hour at a time? Do you think and reason with the Lord? Because if you don't, 
if you don't slow down what you're doing, if you don't back off all your energy drinks, your hyperness, your hyperactivity, and learn how to be still, you will be deceived. The time is at hand, and Jesus is coming. He made no uncertain statements about what it would look like, how it would be when the Son of Man returns. And we are living in that generation. There is no question that he told us to do some things. Not only to be ready, but also when he did come. And I wonder if you thought about those things that he said. If you listened to the voice of God speaking to you, and reminding you of what Jesus said. Because that's why the Spirit of God was given you. To remind you of the things Jesus said. And the reason is pretty simple. And we'll think on these things by night. Here at Vidivo, Meditations in the Night. We'll think about what Jesus said. Not just what he did. Because Jesus is speaking today just as he said he would in the book of Revelation in the letters to the seven churches. Because time is short and we're running out of time. God does not sit back and say, oh, go do what you want to do according to grace and mercy that you've been given. And I'll hold you accountable at the end of the age. That's not God. That's you. God says, today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart, as it says in the provocation, because you need today to hear his voice, to walk in his way, to know him personally, intimately, and in a real way, so that you can say, oh, I know Jesus, and I know my Father in heaven, and I know that I will not be deceived by any other person or any other thing that goes against what Jesus said. Because frankly, most of what people are doing today especially in America, is not what Jesus said.